So I read Alan Lomax's book, Mr. Jelly Lord, and listened to the tapes of interviews with him and decided to go ahead and try and develop that as a musical. And uh, during, when that was first taking shape, uh, I was also doing a uh, commercial production of How I Got That Story and met Pam Coslow, whose husband is Gregory Hines, and asked her if Greg would like to join us at Music Theater Group and perhaps direct, I think was our first impulse, um, uh, Jelly's Last Jam, because we were in the habit of choosing people who had not taken on a certain role in production to give them an opportunity to do that. And Pam and I joined forces to try and develop it um, for a commercial venue. And just about at that time, I think Greg decided that he would prefer to be in, play the role of Jelly Roll, rather than to um, direct it. And there began a, I guess, a 10-year saga. He wanted to have a, a great character like the Music Man or Tevia and um, you know he was in UB and Sophisticated Ladies which were which were lovely pieces but the main character wasn't a character that you would uh, remember or identify <coughs> with or you could learn from or really feel from and that's what he wanted and that was my impetus in getting involved in the show and then I mean, I never realized the kind of road and the kind of experiences uh, that I would have and, and all the very talented people that we worked with along the way, several different writers, several different directors, um, all who were very talented. But, you know, it's just a question of timing. Um, not that anybody wasn't particularly right, but it's just the right people coming together at the right time and that spark igniting. I think it was both the idea of working with them and, and working on something like this was compelling enough for us to say, look, it's not our own, but we'd be happy to, to work with you on it. And so um, if indeed the commercial theater is a sort of synthesis of art and commerce, the fact is they had art, which was unbelievably attractive to us, and our role then assumed organizing and coordinating the commerce end of it, which began with dealing with the kind of baggage a project picks up over the eight years it took to get from when they began to when they got to us. Music would be adapted, there, there would be new lyrics put to songs that had old lyrics, there would be lyrics put to songs that had never had lyrics, some of the things would be switched around and that you would then even have somebody writing, writing music to go with the original Morton uh, pieces. So that was the, the starting place, and then going out and beginning the usual process of getting rights from book writers and, and uh, new lyricists, new, new arranger composers. So it was a long and difficult project just from that point of view. But going to, it, the Morton Estate has a music publisher, and we dealt with that music publisher um, who controls all of those songs. And that was, that was really the beginning of putting this puzzle together. They set out to do a breakthrough musical, and then they set out to sell it in breakthrough ways. Uh, advertising is only ever as good as the client that you're working for, because you can present an absolutely sensational idea, and if nobody wants to pay for it, it never sees the light of day. What we uh, presented, and what Pam and Margot were uh, brave enough to do, was an ad that was very, very expensive, that did not have a lot of information in it, really only that single piece of information, that it was the most nominated show on Broadway. and. Um, in advertising, you can shout or you can uh, speak very articulately and uh, sensibly. And this was an articulate, sensible expression of a... Of and, a and you, got, you know, you have heard that our cast is extraordinary. George has had a reputation of doing ensemble pieces and casting his show so that each person is like a mosaic in this beautiful pattern. And then he had Gregory, who was a star who he had not really worked with. So he had to take his overall vision, include Gregory, who wanted to have a role as a star, but yet keep him as part of the ensemble so it didn't look like a star vehicle and have the rest of the show be meaningful. 
We got to sit in the theater. We got to watch them work together. We got to see Greg talk to George about how he felt. We got to see the lighting designer, Jules Fisher, come in and highlight everything. Robin come in and build the set around them. And what we could offer, aside from the money, is a sounding board. We could, when we were gently asked our opinion, be able to say, well, this is a little bit...